Welcome to Wine Line Radio and best wishes for a great 4th of July celebration. This is your host, Robert Scott, and today we're honoring a great patriot, business partner, and friend of Thomas Jefferson, Philip Matze, whose contributions to our Declaration of Independence made history. Listen as we discuss Philip with Francesco Matze, CEO of the famous Matze Winery in Tuscany. Hello, Francesco. This is Robert. Hey, Robert. How are you? I am fine, nice thank to, you. Nice to hear. Nice to hear you. Good to hear you too. How's the weather in Tuscany today? The weather today is sunny, but not that hot like it has been uh, previously. Well, that's good. And uh, here it has been very, very hot in Florida. Ambient temperature has been in the uh, mid 90s, but it feels like a hundred. So we're wow. having a hot spell. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, now here, here is uh, today. I think is about seventy, seventy-five, kind of like that, which is very, very nice. I have to say. Well, great. I'm ha- I'm glad you're having uh, good weather today. The purpose of this uh, conversation is really to discuss uh, Philip uh, Mutze and uh, his relationship to the uh, United States. He was a close friend and business partner of Thomas Jefferson and a relative of yours, correct? Yep. He was, um, he was a relative of us, uh, although he's part of a side branch of the family, but is definitely, I might say, 100%. Well, let's talk about the story a little bit. Uh, Philip uh, Matze appeared in Monticello in the winter of 1774, and he was accompanied by Jefferson's London merchant agent, uh, Thomas Adams. He became a house guest at Monticello, brightening the last two months of 1774 for Jefferson, who had lost his sister Elizabeth at age 29 earlier that year. He, if I understand correctly, uh, Philippe uh, was then 43 years old, and he'd been trained as a surgeon in Florence. He had worked as a ship's doctor, then practiced in the Middle East before settling in London, where he had been a wine uh, merchant for many years. So does that sound correct so far? Absolutely correct. Uh, yeah, it's it's a he was a, uh, a character. Uh, so he was supposed to act as a surgeon, and then he <laughs> ended to be a, a, a wine trader, a wine dealer. <laughs> Very funny. That that's interesting. He was also a well-known horticulturist, uh, and he had sailed to Virginia to introduce the culture of grapes olives, and uh, whatever fruit trees that he found could flourish there. And he had brought with him a cr- his own crew of Italian vineyard workers. Yeah, that's that's uh, perfectly correct. Uh, apparently, it was uh, a crew of about 40 people that moved uh, to Virginia that, uh, together with him. So he and his crew were in Virginia. And uh, Jefferson indulged them in some of his favorite activities, which were building, gardening, buying and selling land. He drew up a charter for a joint stock company for his new friend and neighbor, Philippe Matze, buying a 50-pound sterling share in a scheme to cultivate silk grown on wine grapes and raise olive trees on Matze's slopes near Monticello, all without slave labor and relying on Italian vineyard workers imported from Tuscany. Yep, I confirmed that too. As I said, there was a, apparently it was a, a 40 people all together coming from Tuscany and uh, with old materials like vines, uh, olive trees and whatever could, uh, could be planted and silk trees and everything. And uh, and the funny story is that there was uh, a tailor with them. You know, Italian style is always very important. To oh, be right, elegant. absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So did the, uh, the tailor uh, design and uh, make uh, the uh, clothing for uh, Jefferson? 
Yeah, they no, no. This is this is true. This is history. The, the, they introduce a, a, a particular jacket, hunting jacket, uh, which was pretty popular in Tuscany, and uh, that up there was very, very successful in Virginia too. Well, it's interesting because from that point in April of 1774, Philippe's notebooks uh, were crammed with uh, plans and expenditures to produce wine in the really what was the first large-scale viticultural experiment in North, North America. He was not alone in this uh, inability to foresee events is testified by his other shareholders, who included both George Washington and Lord Dunmore. According to the local legend, uh, Jefferson was able to greet those 40 workers in their own Tuscan accent. Those men who had heard only English for many months immediately wept. So they yeah, were this, they were happy uh, to hear their native language. <laughs> This, this is something, is a detail, honestly, I didn't know, uh, but uh, very interesting. I thought so. I thought it was very good. Yeah. Um, very good, yeah. They, oh, uh, by the way, thank you, thank you for telling me. <laughs> oh, my pleasure. <laughs> I did a little research over the last few days, so hopefully some of the things I found are, are true. Uh you know, what, the th reason that we're discussing this because of the 4th of July, which marks the uh, independence uh, and the uh, introduction of the, uh, of the Declaration of Independence to the American colonies, uh, written by Jefferson, is that Jefferson really received the, the statement, basically, all men are created equal, and from Philippe Motzik, who was a great, uh, not only a patriot, but uh, a real believer in human rights. So maybe uh, you, you have some enlightenment uh, about that. Oh, it's interesting that uh, Philip was coming from Tuscany, uh, and he was uh, open-minded, very liberal, very, very open, and very, as you said, very... Uh, keen about human rights. And Tuscany at that time was a state itself uh, because Italy hadn't been unified uh, yet. And, uh, and I, I can say, uh, I'm not, I'm not being pretentious, that the, the Tuscany was the most liberal, modern, uh, an open uh, country in the world at that time. So it brought this new ideal, which uh, inspired uh, the Virginians and, and Jefferson. And, and one of these was the, his uh, thoughts about uh, equality. So it was absolutely, again, slavery. And, uh, and uh, that's why uh, this tense was taken as the cornerstone of the Declaration of Independence yeah, by I, Jefferson. Right. And, and you may know that uh, a few alleged scholars really tried to discredit Matze as the creator of this statement and idea, saying that there's no mention of it anywhere until after the Declaration was published. However... This phrase appeared in Italian, in Matze's own hand, written in Italian, several years prior to the writing of the Declaration of Independence. And Matze yes. and Jefferson often exchanged ideas about true liberty and freedom. No one, no one man can take complete credit for the ideals of American democracy, but certainly... Philippe was right there with Thomas in trying to set up these uh, historic ideas. I, I, I absolutely believe that, and there are, uh, there are very important uh, people, like, uh, on top of everybody, uh, John Kennedy, who uh, witnessed it, that this thoughts about uh, freedom and equality 
that uh, Thomas uh, Jefferson uh, wrote for the, the in the Declaration of Independence were paraphrased by the writings of Philip Matzei. So I think this, you know, like like most of many things, you are never sure 100 percent, but there's there's plenty of documents that can show that. And the most important is that there were there were writings of Philip saying exactly the same thing before the Declaration of Independence was issued. Correct. And uh, so let's uh, let's make Philip an honorary citizen of America. I think that would be a wonderful thing. Yes. Yeah. Now let's talk about a little bit about the history of the Matze family uh, yeah. and its relationship to Tuscany's winemaking history. Yes. Uh, well, first of all, uh, the Matze family is one of the oldest family in Tuscany and then one of the family that has been in the wine industry for uh, the longest time. The documents um, of the 1300s that um, are uh, whose contents are about winemaking, about wine growing, about uh, vine growing. Sorry, and uh, so there's 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 a long long history, and basically the the turning point is when the Matzeis uh, inherited the property of Fonterutel in 1435. So um, let me say that Fonterruti is our uh, milestone, uh, is the milestone of our, uh, of our history because we have been uh, owning uh, the, the, that property since 1435 for 25 generations now. Wow, that's, that's quite a long time. It is. <laughs> and uh, let's see. Just looking through some notes I had here. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it, you know, you really, the, the whole uh, history of winemaking in Tuscany seems to really be revolved around your family. Well, I would say that there's a, there's a bunch of families that have been... Um, very prominent in in the wine industry, and one of these, let me say, four uh, four families in Tuscany. One of these is the Mazzei family. Well, uh, you should be very proud of that, and I, you know, I really think it shows in the wine that you produce. And one of those wines is a commemorative wine about Philippe uh, or Philip, if you want to pronounce it that way. Uh, it's uh, an extraordinary wine that honors Philippe Matze. Uh, and it's a, what, 100% Cabernet? It is. It is 100% Cabernet, and there's a reason. Uh, it's to it's, it's, a, it's a real tribute to Philippe Matze, who was a Tuscan citizen, but he spent uh, most of his life around the world. So uh, the wine to commemorate him was made of an international variety, Cabernet or French variety, as you want to call, not, not Italian, non indigenous, let me say, and but with a very, very Tuscan character. So it's a 100% it's a Cabernet Sauvignon with... Uh, um, a very good structure, but also uh, freshness and elegance given by the acidity, uh, which is typical of Tuscan wines. Well, it's uh, being all Cabernet, but it's not a single vineyard. It's a, uh, if I believe I'm correct, it's a blend of uh, Cabernet from a number of uh, your estates. Well, you know, you know a lot of things, Robert. <laughs> yes, it's uh, it's uh, it's about fifty fifty from uh, the Fonterutoli property in the Chianti Classico and uh, uh, the other 50% from the Belguardo property in the Marema region, which is by the coast in southern Tuscany. So you get a combination of Cabernet, and, uh, and uh, very often I say it's a blended Cabernet, uh, although it's a, it's a only Cabernet Sauvignon, because the Cabernet from the from the coast is very is more powerful and spicy, and the one from the... Uh, 
from Fonterutoli is more elegant and uh, fresh. Yes, uh, it's been some time since I've tasted it. I wish I had a bottle here to, to taste today. What's the uh, current uh, released vintage? Is that uh, 2012 or have you released the 13? No, well? we, 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 we uh, at the winery, we have already released the 14 and we're oh. about to release the 15. Yeah. No problem. <laughs> No, I was saying that um, we are we have released already the 2014, and the, we're about to release the 15. And uh, of course, in, in the U.S., we are always a bit on delay due to the long distribution chain. Sure. Well, this this wine really embodies the uh, kind of new world spirit of Tux, Tuscan winemaking. Uh, as well as the revolutionary character of uh, Philip Mudse, and expresses your family's desire to pursue happiness. Is that correct? Absolutely, absolutely. One wine is 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 uh, no more uh, a nutritional good. It's it's something that you have to enjoy, and this and it's something that has to give you the joy of life, the joy of uh, of tasting, of uh, appreciating what the nature can provide. Well, let's uh, do a salute to uh, Philip Matze and to his wine. And uh, folks out there, uh, if uh, this is an exceptional uh, Cabernet Sauvignon uh, and one that you should try. So search it out. Uh, in fact, uh, if you can find multiple vintages of it, get some 12, 13, 14, and 15 when it shows up, and then be able to compare how it changes over the vintages. I think you'll uh, love it. Uh, I know the last time I had of it, I, I just thought the wine was exceptional. Thank you, Robert. I I appreciate the wine. I, I can I can absolutely say it's really really exceptional. It has a lot of character, uh, identity, and there's something very unique not only for us but hopefully for everybody. Well, thank you so much, uh, Francesco. Uh, it was great to talk to you this morning in the afternoon in uh, Tuscany. Uh, and we hope to uh, see you in late September or early October when uh, we hope to be in Chianti. Very good. I look forward to seeing you. Okay. Thank you so much again. Ciao. Okay. Ciao, ciao, Robert. Ciao.